All right, so it is the next big fight after the fiscal cliff, and as America crosses its debt limit of $16.4 trillion, some lawmakers see the oncoming battle over our nation's spending as a chance to stop a growing problem that they say threatens to bleed our economy dry. Four straight years of trillion-dollar deficits and projected spending that no realistic amount of tax revenue could cover have put us at a crossroads. Either we tackle our nation's spending problem or it's going to tackle us. It's that simple. Well, Senator Jerry Moran is a Republican out of Kansas and a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Thank you for joining us, Senator. Uh, as we stated, the debt now over $16 trillion. How crippling is the interest alone? Well, interest payments, the debt service is uh, a third, is the third largest component of our federal spending. And we're fortunate at the moment that interest rates are as low as they are. If we were paying what we historically would expect to pay uh, as uh, interest on the national debt, we couldn't afford it today. And so if interest rates rise, uh, this crisis uh, hits us immediately. But there is no question that this is the issue of my lifetime. It's the issue that determines whether or not America has a bright future and our kids and grandkids can live the American dream. Yeah, you did vote no two years ago against raising our borrowing limit. You know, pundits keep saying, you know, it's, it used to be routine to raise the debt ceiling when we hit it until recently. But, you know, there is a reason that that ceiling is put in place. There is a tipping point where it becomes unsustainable. Have we reached it? Uh, we're, we're there. There's no question about it. And I've indi indicated two years ago, indicated again now, that unless we substantially change the way we do business and significantly reduce our spending, there is no way that we can vote to raise the debt ceiling. And there are those who will say, well, that's, uh, that's irresponsible. Uh, kind of the newspaper editorialists, the Wall Street crowd, will say that we're being irresponsible. I would say that it's more irresponsible to raise the debt ceiling when we have the debt that we have today. Why have a debt ceiling if every time you meet the debt ceiling, you're simply going to vote to raise the debt ceiling? It means nothing. It's there to create the, the will, the necessity to have the discipline to quit spending money we don't have. All and right. now that we have, the, now that we have the, the tax issue behind us, we can focus 100% upon this spending issue. Well, that is what some conservatives are saying. Uh, they're uh, complaining, some of them, that Republicans caved in the fiscal cliff negotiations, and they say they're hoping that uh, the Republicans are saving this fight for the debt ceiling battle. Is that where Republicans are planning to draw a line in the sand? Well, you know, there's a split as to what uh, the, the, quote, conservative vote would be. When you can uh, lock in uh, permanently 99% of the uh, Bush tax cuts, uh, I would say that's a pretty conservative victory, but I understand there's disagreement out there. Uh, one of the things our country needs is some certainty as to what the tax code is going to be, and the president has used uh, increasing taxes on who he considers wealthy uh, as, um, as a scapegoat for why we have this tremendous debt. So now the president has no longer the standing to argue about the need to increase taxes, and it, it, it takes that off the table. The president. The president's proposal, and he talked about this during the campaign, and it seemed to me that it worked well for him politically, uh, his tax increase would fund about 16 days of the federal government's spending. It would not solve the, the deficit that we have. Now we can focus exclusively on what the real problem is, which is how much money we borrow each year, how much money we spend each year that we don't have uh, revenues to pay for. And meanwhile, though, the Democrats, uh, for their part, are claiming a mandate after the last election, uh, saying that uh, President Obama's victory uh, demonstrates that it's that philosophy that the country should be following. What do you say? Is there a mandate? I, don't, I think it's a mistake for the Obama administration or for Democrats to claim a mandate. Uh, the House members uh, who got reelected, uh, all of them were up for election. Many Republicans reelected, a majority they can claim a mandate as well. So I, I think that's a mistake uh, politically. The goal here is not necessarily about what the political mandate is anyway. It's about doing what's right for the future of our country. And in my view, my generation, different than, the, than my parents' generation, is passing on to our kids and grandkids a country totally different and totally handicapped uh, by the amount of debt. So regardless of the political mandate and the political rhetoric that uh, is out there, the reality is that no one has the, the, it would be irresponsible for anyone 
Democrat or Republican, to just continue down the path that we're going. Uh, and it would be irresponsible not only to the future generation, but we need to fix Social Security and Medicare for the current generation so that it doesn't go broke. All right, so we have this, to leave is it a, there. this is an economic necessity. All right, Senator Jerry Moran, thank you so much for joining us.